This is August 1st, 1996. This is bed number two. Bed number three. This is bed number four.
is family five. This is family five, 22905. And I'm gonna use this family as an example to show how much the seedlings have grown in just one month. A month ago, I took the measurements of um, the average height of each family and, and uh, what stage they were in in flushing. And a month ago, this family was averaging about 19 centimeters in height and there was about half that were in their second flush. And now I would say they're averaging probably around 32 or 35 centimeters in height. And, but some of the seedlings are real tall, as you can see, just in this family alone. And I would say that about, well, all of them have completed their second flush and, and most of them are into their third, well into their third flush by now. Um, let me show you how tall they are. So they've grown a lot in just the past month. This is family 2-20-705 and this is an example of what the rot did to the seedlings. Um, I would say about a fourth of this bed was affected, of this uh, family was affected by the rot. Um, and this is a much wetter soil here than where we just were, which was um, down towards the beginning of the bed. And you can see how far away we are from the beginning of the bed. Um, but the seedlings haven't grown very much either. A month ago they were averaging 9.5 centimeters and now they're averaging probably like 11 so they really haven't been growing very much and it looks like all the seedlings in this area like right in this little area were affected um, by the rot and they're not they don't seem to be growing as well like if we look at the ones right next to it this family seems to be doing okay but this family right behind it is probably about the same level as that one is, so it's not doing too well either. Now I've moved down the bed, um, towards the end of the bed, probably about a hundred feet, and it looks to me like the seedlings are still being affected by the rot a little bit. And this family has been pretty hit by it and hasn't grown much in the past month. These um, families that have been hit by the rot aren't, um, there's not too many of them and uh, the majority of the seedlings at the out here look real good and I'm real pleased with uh, the growth we're getting on them. I'm now at the end of the bed and I've, I'm pretty much on the rise and the seedlings up here look real good in pretty much all the families. They've gained a lot of height. And they're in their, second, their third flush now.
Now tomorrow I'm going to come out here again and take an estimate of the average heights of each family and the flush that they're in. So I'll probably do that about once every month. And it was a month ago the last time I measured those. So. The cherry barks. And they look like they've grown quite a bit too. First bed of the northern reds from the opposite end, which I from which I first videoed. Number two. Three. the last bed, bed four. Here's the Loblolly Pines that you uh, asked me to check out for you. Most of them I would say are around 20 centimeters in height. There were some that were that I looked at they were as low as 14 or 15 and some as high as 26 or 27 so but they're probably all around 20 centimeters
This is family 576-324. And I've picked out about 10 families that showed the greatest variation in their growth within families. And I've picked out a sample seedling that demonstrates our grading criteria. I've picked out uh, one seedling from each family that shows a normal size seedling, an abnormal size seedling, a stunted seedling, and a disease seedling. And then I've taken the heights of this sample seedling and flagged them, and we're going to watch the growth of this um, until we lift the seedlings. And in this particular family, as you can see, there's some bare places. And there's just a lot of up and down in the growth. Here's one of the seedlings in the 576 family that I believe is an abnormal seedling. It's in its first flush. And here's the seedling from the 576 family that appears to be stunted. And it's in its second flush. Here's the normal seedling of 576, and it's in its third flush, and as you can see, it's a good uh, probably 10 inches taller than the stunted seedling, or, uh, and about a good two feet taller than the abnormal seedling. But as we go down the row, you can see how the growth of the seedlings just dramatically changed to some abnormals there. And then there's some spots where the seedlings have died or didn't germinate. They get a little taller, a little more healthy. This is family 704-7-7. And as you can see, the, the seedlings at the beginning of the family here are, are pretty normal. And then as you get further down to the end of the, of the um, family plot, the seedlings become smaller.
some more stunted. And these seedlings right here are normal. And we're going to watch the growth of these to see if they stay that way. Seedling and the ones adjacent to it are stunted. They're in their second flush and they're about um, six inches shorter than the normal seedling. And this seedling I've designated as abnormal. It's a lot shorter than the normal and about five inches shorter than the um, stunted seedling. It's only in its first flush. And the ones adjacent to it on the same row are also abnormal. This is family 705-2-20, and it's been pretty hit pretty hard with the um, with rot, and most of the seedlings are pretty stunted or abnormal, and most likely we will lose this family for our study, because um, there's just the seedlings. Most of them aren't even in their second flush, and they're real short. This would be a normal size seedling for this family. Still, it's pretty short. It's only probably 23 centimeters in height. Would it be a stunted seedling? It's a bit shorter than the normal size seedling for this family. And this would be an abnormal size seedling. <laughs> and these seedlings would be diseased. Their leaves are browning and they're curling. I've identified some families that um, I think we're going to lose for this study, and this is one of them. This is 330-2-31. The seedlings are, most of them are, about half of them are in their second flush. None of them are in their third, and there's a few abnormals. This, family's, this is family 6431-2-31, and we're going to lose this family, I'm sure. It's got a lot of rot in it. This is family 728-7-1, and I'm sure this family will not be used in my study. A lot of the uh, seedlings have died, and a lot of them didn't germinate. Most of them are only in their first flush, and they have a lot of rot. This is 705-2-20. And most likely this family will be lost in our study. This is family 889-7-15. And we will probably lose this family in the study. Most of the seedlings are stunted, or a lot of them are still in their first flush. Some of them have rot.
This is 705-3-2, and we will probably lose this family in the study. Most of the seedlings are stunted. A lot of them are in their first flush. A lot of them are abnormal. Some of them have rot. This is family 565-2-29. And we're probably going to, we might lose this family in this study. There's only one little section of it. It's about a four foot, about a four foot section that appears to be normal and the rest appear to be diseased or abnormal. Yeah, family 200-2-7, and this family will probably be not, use, not be used in the study. There's a few that are in their second flush, but I'd say 80 to 90 percent are still in their first flush. There's not much disease, but they're not growing like they should be. Family 540-3-35, and this family might or might not be lost in the study. It's hard to tell. Some of them are in their third flush. Most of them are in their second flush, and there's a few in the first flush. But it's just the growth, the height growth is so small on this family. I'm not sure if, we're, if this is going to be used in the study or not. So we're going to watch the growth of these families that are maybes and uh, see how they end up. This family 877-7-2, and this family may or may not be lost in the study. It's such a small family and uh, over half the seedlings look like they're stunted or abnormal. And the normal looking seedlings for this family don't appear to be exhibiting very good growth characteristics. They're still kind of short. Family 323-2-20, and this family may or may not be, be lost in our uh, study. It's a short family, and or it's a small family, and a lot of the seedlings are short and, or abnormal. Some of them have the disease.
October 29, 1996, Northern Red Oak planting at the East Tennessee State Nursery. This area that I'll be panning contains a lot of damage from root rot. these families are not considered for evaluation in the park. Area that has a lot of root rot in it. Unfortunately, a lot of these seedlings were tended to the Cherokee National Forest. damaged family. This characteristic browning on the leaves allowed us to detect pockets of trees that have been damaged in some of the families that uh, were in higher areas. This is a good example of some of the bias due to misfertilization treatment. In some of these plots, the trees on the left side were judged to grow reasonably normally, and the trees on the right side were judged to have missed some, one or more fertilization treatments or fertilization treatment at a critical time. In some of these families, we chose to sample lateral plots. Instead of going across the nursery bed, we would take a sample from the two rows on the left that are growing well, sampling four, four feet along those two rows to equal the same area as if we took a two-foot sample across the nursery bed. some families, the fertilization and disease was, disease problems were both present, and so we chose our sample points around these areas. Probably had a fertilization bias plus a little disease pocket. area. A little bit over here, you can see the fertilization bias. These two rows did not receive
This family looks like that the fertilizers came on and off, or as I'm pausing in this location, might have been a little bit of disease. As you can, the family length trees seem to go up and down and up and down. in blocks. Certainly down at the far end there's a disease pattern. Probably this was compound, a compounded effect from fertilizer and disease in the spring. In this family you can see clearly the two rows on the right are shorter than the two rows on the left. We probably we have orange flag marked where we were thinking about taking samples, but instead of sampling these areas across the bed, we'll probably take samples using only the two rows on the left going down four feet to equal the same area as a two-foot sample across the bed. Sample flag, and we're using the chromatic system where we sample a foot off on either side of the flag and all the trees in here. Obviously, these trees have bias in them, so we would, what we're proposing is to sample this way. However, that bias extends over into these seedlings, and we probably have a little bit of a disease pop up here, and so I would propose to take a lateral sample more down in this, in this area here. It seems to be more representative of the different size classes of the trees. Give some size perspective to the seedling. This family represents a pretty uniform growth, and so we won't really have a problem picking out some clusters. Sample point right here, and a sample point right here, and there's really no dose variation or disease in this family. Let me start. Let me take a picture. Okay.
Well, Tammy Point, you should get out of this family. It follows you right through. Um, it's a very good trail uniform. Um, this area over here is, is pretty diseased, so you wouldn't want to camp around this area. Um, you can see we have a lot of growth variation. And we'll have the crown in the front, where the seedlings are a little higher in the middle and lower in the, um, the outer rows. So you probably only get really one good family photo of each one. This, this mic is questionable because we do have a little sitting in here sometimes. So I can't really see you getting that. You're probably going to get that. You're probably going to get that. Forward the camera. Back up, back up. In order to determine um, and to try to determine what is causing the growth variation from the buds, I took samples of the leaves and soil samples from areas in particular families that showed a specific growth variation. And um, I took soil and leaf samples in areas that had small seedling growth and areas that had large seedling growth. This area right here is the small um, seedling growth area, and I took leaf samples from the um, leaves of the first flush that was green, and I took a composite sample of 25 core um, soil samples from each area, and we're going to analyze those and compare, compare the results between the two areas to see if there's any significant differences. Get a close up of the okay. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay, come back up here and talk. Did I get it? No. <laughs> no, I didn't get it. We're on now? We're on okay. now. We're perfect. <laughs> this is the area I designated as small or abnormal seedling growth probably due to fertilizer deficiency and it extends from where these two white flags are down four feet to these two white flags which encompasses an eight foot an eight square foot area and this is <laughs> the new site is a site that you see in the distance that is not sown in winter wheat see your irrigation lines have been run out to the new site. Site you know, in the immediate foreground of this zone and how to do that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's kinda hard to put on actually. Stacy has put on the polarizer, so we should be able to see this area better. This is the old field, or the field that we looked at last year, that they weren't able to run irrigation last year, so we didn't use any UVI on. Coming across here in the distance by those tall trees is an area that is not sown in winter wheat. And that's the area that they're proposing to grow oaks on this, this coming year. the new site, or the new new site. 